Hi everyone. So today we're taking a look at Drive Club, a PlayStation 4 exclusive from Sony. Now this game was delayed for a whole year initially, and when it's launched it's not had the best launch possible, lots of server issues and missing content. So we held off reviewing Drive Club until, well, we really had no other choice. We're very close to Christmas now, and if Sony hasn't got this game into shape, it's their own fault. So what is Drive Club? Drive Club is a driving game. It's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory in many respects. The idea is you have a number of different cars, a number of different locations and tracks, and you'll have to compete. Now, during the single player aspect, as it were, they've not really gone for a kind of open world exploration drive to the next event like Forza Horizon 2 or The Crew has done. What they've gone for is very much an old school pick your race, pick your car, compete, go back to the selection area again and choose your next race and next car. Now, each of the races available in the single player are themed, so it might be hot hatchbacks, it might be hypercars, and again, the cars you choose will be limited based on your driver level and how you've managed to unlock cars so far. So much, so old school. Drive Club is a challenging game, probably one of the most challenging driving games I think I've ever played, and I must have played hundreds of them. For my mind, Drive Club is actually too difficult. It's a game which doesn't even want to give you a chance. The AI is not based on driver tar or anything like that, so it's not using real human beings to try and, you know, give you a racing experience. It just seems to be AI that is programmed to never make a mistake and drive as fast as humanly possible. Honestly, in all of my time playing this game, I don't think I've seen the AI make a single mistake, but it will quite happily ram into the back of you, causing you a penalty. It does seem that they've utterly messed up the most vital aspect of a driving game, which is to create a game where you feel challenged, yet it is possible to complete the races. And this is made considerably more difficult because of the game engine itself. They made some really bizarre choices here that probably on paper sounded like they were going to be a really good idea, but when brought together with the aforementioned AI, you have a situation where a lot of these races are just too difficult to complete. The main problem is in the lighting model itself, because you have courses which start off at, say, dusk with a little bit of light, but end in pitch blackness. But at no point are there any light sources around the course other than flags indicating this is a difficult bend, or a medium bend, or an easy bend. This creates a situation where you're barreling along at 150 miles an hour, and you can't see the road. You can't see your track position. It doesn't seem to matter which camera view you use. If you use the in-camera, uh, in-car view as it were, things are a little bit easier. You can judge your relative position to the centre of the road. However, if you're using any of the external uh, cameras, you can't even see the back of your car, it's pitch black. And this creates a situation where most of those races are unplayable, in my opinion. They're certainly not fun to play. You don't look forward to them. You don't think to yourself, wow, this is such a beautiful experience. It's so dark. Look at all the light blooms and everything coming off the limited light sources. What you think to yourself is, oh God, not again. For my mind, things went wrong for Drive Club right at the beginning of their design documentation. They made too many decisions that when brought together, created a compromised game. It really is as simple as that. The lighting model, that means that in brilliant daylight, as it were, the game world still looks pretty dark and dull, but then dazzles you with these sudden bright lens flares, which you would think most racing drivers would have some sunglasses available, thus limiting the impact. No, no, not in Drive Club. You'll just be blinded. Likewise, at night, you would expect these courses to have some light sources dotted around, so you can better understand track position. Those aren't there either. You've then got the penalties when you run into other cars, or more importantly, when the AI simply runs into you. And then you've got those three second slowdown penalties if you come off the track. All of this adds to a situation combined with the way the AI drives that means that even the smallest, littlest, tiniest mistake will cost you big and you might as well just restart the race. For my mind, this is gameplay that we left behind 10 years ago. Very, very old school gameplay and it doesn't gel well when put against The Crew and Forza Horizon 2. Two games that want to be accessible and want to be playable by the masses. Drive Club seems to be the opposite. It's almost a case of, if you don't like it, play something else. 
So my advice to you would be, the majority of people will not like Drive Club. Go and play something else. It is not a well-made game. Given that it was delayed for a year, launched, failed miserably at launch, and has so many bits of missing content, like the weather for instance, that's only just been patched in, and doesn't add anything actually to the gameplay here, it just makes the game harder, if anything. It strikes me that Sony messed up right at the beginning. They really did trust Evolution Studios to deliver this incredible game based on a paper document. When the game didn't come together last year, they delayed it. But instead of going back and saying, okay, we're gonna have to retool this game because clearly it's not working properly, they've pushed ahead anyway with that flawed design and released a game that is not fit for purpose. It isn't a fun driving game. It's not even a fun driving simulator, which we could say to ourselves, okay, if it's a driving simulator, then fair enough, we can give a lot more leeway in all of these different areas. But it doesn't work as a simulation either because the car handling is too floaty for a lot of the cars, or in some cases have atrocious turning circles that means you can't even do a decent drift in them properly. Everything here strikes me as a game that never was going to work. It really wasn't, and I don't think it would have mattered if they spent three years in delay trying to get this working. If they stuck to that original design document, then this is what they've delivered. A flawed driving experience that is no good to anybody but the most hardcore faithful. And I'm afraid that is a very small, thin part of the wedge these days. This is not a game for the mass market, and certainly not a game for people who want to have fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can pledge $1 a month on Patreon to help support the Androidizen, keeping us 100% independent. An honest opinion direct from the UK. If you pledge $1 a month, you'll be entered into our prize pool to win cool items from our review bag. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. We love to chat.